Okay, welcome back. AP Calculus AB, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Absolute Value Functions, Part 2. And all I just want to do is a second example here, because I think that the more examples you guys see, the more comfortable you're going to feel when you see this on the AP exam. And I'm interested in this. I'm interested in the area from 0 to, what did I want? From 0 to 4 of the absolute value of x squared, whoops, minus 4x plus 3 dx. Okay, so this seems really simple, uh, but it's not because it, it has this weird, it looks weird, so I wonder if you can take a second and look at this function with me. So here's our function. Our function might look, it's going to look like this, right? What The way I'm visualizing this function, frankly, is that I want it to look like this. I want it to look like this. And some of you are already going, nah, but it doesn't. I, yeah, I know it doesn't, but I just want to make sure we get an idea of, of what we're looking for here. So the first thing I did was I took my x squared minus 4x. Well, that looks like crap. Um, and I factored it, and it factored out to x minus 1 times x plus 2. And that's going to be true no matter what. So I know what these two points are, this point and this point. And this is, whoops. And this is going to be 1, and this is 2, isn't it? Okay. So, here's what I'm getting at. that This thing doesn't do this, because absolute value will be positive, won't it? So, this piece right here that we're looking at, this piece right here is going to get pulled up, isn't it? And it's going to end up looking like this, right? It ends up looking like this. And I want you to try this on your calculator and see if it's not true, but it looks... Can you pretend this shape is exactly yeah, like that one? That I just flipped this thing over. And this piece isn't there, is it? It got pulled up. So this is what our function looks like. This is what f of x is equal to the absolute value of x squared minus 4x plus 3 actually looks like, isn't it? So now I'm asking you for the area. Look, I want the area from 0 to 4, right? So this is what we're looking for here, and this is where it gets kind of weird. Is The area we're looking for is from here. We want this area. We want this area. Right? And we want, and we want this area. Let this be x equals 4 out here, right? So we're looking for those three areas. So we're going to have to come up with those areas. We have to figure out where they are. So first thing I'm going to say is this. The first area we're looking for is, well, frankly, the area we were expecting to be looking for. So let's partition this out. We want the area from 0, right, to 1. This one right here, from 0 to 1 of x squared minus 4x plus 3 dx. And then we want the area from 1, right, from 1 to 2, from 1 to 2 of the opposite of that. So all I'm doing is I'm taking a negative sign and putting it through here, plus 4x minus 3. Okay? All right. Plus, we need more, don't we? Plus, we want the area, right? Because we want it from 0 to 4. Right now, we went from one, 0 to 1, then from 1 to 2. Now, we need to go from 2 to 4, don't we? Of x squared minus 4x plus 3. Sorry dx and dx, right? So hopefully you can see all these things we did here. Let's just see if we can get this figured out really quickly. Uh, in purple, right? That's this. In green, that's this, isn't it? Just to be clear, it's 1 to 2. And that's that area right there, isn't it? And then lastly, we had to get this area here from 2 to 4, and this is 2, 
to 4 out here. All right? So we have to, now we have to integrate, and we have to start taking those things, don't we? So if you integrate this stuff out, if you integrate this stuff out, you're gonna, it's going to end up looking like this, isn't it? So if we're going to go ahead and integrate, we're going to get x cubed over 3 minus 4 x squared over 2, right, plus 3 x, right, right, plus negative x cubed over 3 plus 4 x squared over 2, right, minus 3 x plus, and we're going to integrate this again, is x cubed over 3 minus 4 x squared plus 3x. We can simplify all this stuff. All right, we can simplify all this stuff out. And we can get x cubed over 3 minus 2x squared, right? Plus 3x as evaluated from 0 to 1, right? Because we have to look at that, right? So this is 0 to 1 here. And then this, negative x cubed over 3 plus 2x squared minus, this should be 3x, right? Minus 3x as evaluated from 1 to 2, right? Plus x cubed over 3, should have been over 2, minus 2x squared plus 3x as evaluated from 2 to 4. And then we just start using the fundamental theorem of calculus here, don't we? And we're going to take f of 1 minus f of 0, right? And then over here, we're going to take, using this piece, right, using the correct piece, we're going to take f of 2 minus f of 1. Then we're going to go over and use this piece over here, and we're going to add that. We're going to say f of 4 minus f of 2. We have to remember to use the correct pieces. Remember that, let's take a look at this really quickly. Let's see how we did this, didn't we? More important than doing all this is keeping track of where all this crap goes. So, right? This is this, isn't it? This is that first partition, right? And that gives us this piece right here. The second one was in green, and it's this part right here, isn't it? It's the part from 1 to 2, and it's this. And here's us using the fundamental theorem of calculus there. And the last one was was this, and if you remember, go back and look, we went from here, and that's this piece right here. Now, you can feel free to comment and give me your opinion here, um, but I think you can definitely do this and get back to me and tell me what your answer was, because I, I hate keeping you and keeping you and keeping you. I, I guess what I want to make sure we know is that what does the graph look like, how do we figure out where it changes behaviors, and how do we integrate by part here so we're gathering our areas so area one area two area three all right love to hear from you good luck